everybody and welcome back to my uh, modeling channel. So today we're gonna build a, a little uh, single engine uh, prop aircraft called the Bulldog and it's gonna be on scale uh, 172 from Airfix. So let's open that box. As you can see it has been uh, it's a pretty old box that I had uh, since I was a teenager I would remember. And so let's open that box, see what we have inside. And uh, Let's make this little build interesting. So, initially, we have uh, our fuselage will come in two parts. Uh, all the panel lines are slightly outside, so there might be some... Uh, I'm going to have to uh, rescribe most of the things. We have also some uh, very light rivet panel, and I will try to uh, remake that uh, as smooth as possible. Uh, we have also on the other sprue basically here is the wing. The wing is in two parts so we have the uh, intrado and the extrado and there will be also some panel lines. The cockpit is here and so is the engines and uh, some stick. We have also the central console panel and the undercarriage which is for a, a fixed gear and we will have as well the prop and all the rest. So the kit comes with a 2 decal possibility. You have an RIF and a Swedish Air Force but mainly what I will do on that aircraft I will do a civilian marking. So enough of talking and let's start uh, building. So we're gonna initially uh, build that model by replicating uh, some, of the some of my lost parts. So unfortunately I lost uh, some, uh, some wheels and some propellers. So basically what I had to do is uh, I use uh, this uh, kind of modeling paste that I have to put in uh, boiling water and then you can form everything uh, you want to do, every type of forms. So what I did, I took uh, my uh, Tomahawk uh, main landing gears and wheels and I was able to reform basically uh, the, the main landing gear and the nose wheel. So you initially put the first part and then uh, after that you will put it in the cold water, let it dry and then you take another part and uh, make a two mold uh, for this, uh, this uh, undercarriage. After that I use some uh, two dual composite uh, epoxy uh, putty and uh, mix them together and after that you will uh, blend them and uh, you will be able to replicate uh, the part you have to do. So you will press it together, uh, put a clamp on it and then uh, let it dry for a couple of hours and then uh, later on uh, you'll have your parts will be uh, completed. So after that it was the time to start our uh, build. So for this I initially started with the wings. I of course had a, a lot of preparation on the parts. So you know uh, those old uh, airfix kits are not uh, that uh, very well uh, built and uh, not easy to make. So I initially did the wings then uh, I put uh, the cockpit board basically instrument panel into the, the model and then uh, I'll uh, add just a little bit of glue and then get uh, ready the other part. Then I will be working on both parts. So after that I started to add the seat to our uh, to our kit and uh, to, to continue basically the build of the cockpit and the interior. So after letting it dry what uh, I will mainly do will be uh, start painting everything. So for these I went on the internet and uh, look for uh, some uh, detailed pictures of uh, the interior and uh, after that I had to, uh, to paint. So um, while the seats are drying I had to also add a little bit of putty and uh, whilst uh, the putty was uh, drying then uh, I'll start to uh, do the paint job on the interior. If 
further on uh, building my model, I realized that uh, with some other pictures that the interior was uh, a light brown uh, color, so I had to do uh, a little bit of correction on that. Then uh, I started to use some uh, matte black to replicate uh, the uh, engine instruments uh, quadrant, and then uh, using after that uh, basically uh, a wire, I start to finish up uh, some. Uh, some very uh, small detail painting. Either uh, that could have been most probably the inscription uh, on the engine instruments or uh, regularly what we use is uh, some other uh, truss levers uh, on, the, on the, the control panel. After that of course uh, the long uh, process of uh, sending down uh, all uh, those uh, extra putty and uh, after that, I decided to uh, rescribe basically the rivet uh, on that uh, on that wing. So for this, I use uh, a tool, an extra tool. Uh, it's called uh, a rivet tool, I think. And uh, actually, that's uh, allowed to replicate. So you have a different type of rivet for different scale. Uh, the one I bought is for 144, 172, 148 scale. After that, I uh, unmold uh, my uh, my undercarriage. And my wheels and uh, I have to say that the job was not as good as I was hoping for but uh, it was still good enough for me so I continue and I move on uh, the build so uh, after doing that I close the cockpit and then uh, once it was glued I um, fill up all the gaps with some extra pity while the putty was drying I did some finish uh, on the interior and the cockpit and then uh, I copied, uh, I glued the wings uh, with the interior together with uh, the airframe. After sending uh, the nose, it was time to add some weight on the, that aircraft and uh, so I add some uh, modeling paste and then after I put uh, the engine. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough space to put enough weight and uh, later on uh, I had the bad surprise that the plane was sitting on its tail once again. So for this I use uh, some uh, old tricks with a very uh, small piece of double tape uh, adhesive tape. Now it's time to uh, close up uh, our uh, cockpit uh, window and uh, the main window basically and uh, after that we're gonna have to make some uh, masking tape, uh, a precise uh, work basically to avoid uh, all the paint on this uh, beautiful canopy.
I have to say that uh, on this uh, basically aircraft and these windows, as they were pretty large, I initially had uh, to use basically a one millimeter wide uh, adhesive tape from Tamiya, and then uh, I was able to do uh, all the basically the side of uh, those windows, and uh, later on I use a larger uh, band to avoid to have uh, air bubble becoming uh, closing. Uh, closing down next to my window. So after that I put an initial coat of uh, primer and I use a light grey color mainly on uh, all around those windows as uh, we're gonna see that uh, the main airframe I don't I would like to avoid to have a, a one color only uh, on this uh, on this aircraft especially if it's a dark blue and then uh, a white color. So then uh, what we did is I continue on the, with the, the blue stripes on that aircraft and uh, there was a quite a, a difficult job basically uh, later on for masking all that blue as there were some uh, very thin lines but uh, with a little bit of time and patience uh, everything was uh, really uh, handleable I have to say. So unfortunately while uh, the plane was drying uh, it fell off the shelf and uh, I had some uh, bad surprise so I had to do some uh, repair from the tail and uh, the horizontal stabilizer but uh, it went very easily actually I didn't have any problem even with the paint and to do a, a paint touch up later on uh, was not needed so after that I finished with a, a white coat of paint using my standard Tamiya glossy white and uh, of course it went very well uh, after spending quite a lot of time doing all the mask So I let the paint uh, dry overnight and even uh, actually for uh, another two days before removing all the mask and uh, I have to say that uh, the results were uh, quite pleasing I was quite happy about uh, those uh, little uh, white and blue stripes that I made and uh, after that we will be able to uh, put some decals uh, on that aircraft. So uh, I finished also uh, the propeller with uh, some blue paint and I did also of course some touch up on the paint on the blue paint as unfortunately there was some gap uh, in the masking tape so after that uh, we'll put the wheels and uh, the landing gear and, uh, and finish that uh, very nice uh, little model So this is the final result of that uh, Scottish Aviation uh, Bulldog on scale 172 made by uh, Airfix and uh, I have to say that it was a very enjoyable uh, model. It took a little bit uh, more time than expected but uh, I have to say that I was quite happy of the uh, end result. So I hope you enjoyed that build with me. If you did so please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will uh, see you soon for another uh, build video. Thank you for watching.